I am also on the board of, of Volt, and uh, the bank is the president of Volt, and he wrote this letter. And uh, I just want to read part of it because I think he's very, very eloquent in, in, in uh, addressing his points. Uh, we encourage you to continue the item until your previous request for proper alternate routes have been weighed and the desires of the community are considered. We further encourage, uh, I'm in the second paragraph by the way, we further encourage all entities involved to rethink, reroute, or bury this line. Our only concerns as a collective group have been to preserve this unique, beautiful valley and to protect its residents and our collective interests from now and the future. We don't take a, a stance on the proposed transmissions lines, local necessity for Heber Light and Power and the valley's growth. We know that. We know that's it's needed. We need the power. That's, there's no doubt about that. But we have disagreed with its vision, approval process, financial conclusions, and routing, which at times seems haphazardous and incomplete. Further, we are concerned with the real motive that entices Rocky Mountain Power to pay more than 80% of this project to run a regional transmission line through the middle of the valley. Make no mistake about it, this is a regional transmission line. It goes, it's taken to take power from Wyoming to Utah Valley. We will, we will get power and we will have another source of, of power from a different direction, but right now most of the power will go through this valley and, and we're going to have to pay for it. Uh, we are concerned that this new regional transmission line in some cases will travel within 30 feet of existing homes and existing neighborhoods. There has to be a better way. Leaders and planners need to first have res responsibility to their citizens. We have observed that they have not negotiated best for the valley, not due to consensus malice, but due to the allure of a corporate giant agreeing to pay for the bulk of this project. But this agreement has committed the valley to a project and routing that in a current <coughs> form we will regret for generations. When we drive into Midway, on 113 from the east or 113 from the south, we will cross those big power lines. Everybody that comes in, every visitor that comes in throughout the year for, mid, for Swiss days will see that. Now we took uh, some, some uh, input from, from the communities on the substation because it was too close to the, to the, to the railroad and we have hundreds of thousands of people that come in there, but we also will have visual impact to Midway. In the spirit of partnership, one would expect an enormous private entity such as Rocky Mountain Power to respect communities' values and needs when they are being given so much. And conversely, would expect Heber Light and Power to hold the highest values of preservation in its own backyard. We've routed the power line around the north side of Heber City. We moved the, 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 the substation out of Heber, but we have done nothing for Midway. If you guys approve this line, you're going to be dumping this regional transmission line into neighborhoods in Midway. Take it somewhere else. The, the whole problem, one of the major pushback on this line is because you're running it through a neighborhood. Don't put it through a neighborhood. You guys have the power to continue this or to move it out of out of our neighborhoods, and and that's the that's the major problem with this, and so uh, that's what Bolt. Uh, I know it, the neighborhoods in, in Midway, but but the county's part of part of Midway. Midway's part of the county, and <coughs> let's take care of this. Let's let's either bury it through there or, or route it in a different direction because it's it's a it's a monster line. And, it, and we don't build regional transmission lines through neighborhoods. So let's, let's put it somewhere else. Question? I have a quick question. Sorry. Okay. Um, so is it your preference that the Heber Light and Power um, put the entire bill for this one on here? You mentioned that uh, oh, no. Rocky Mountain Power was going to pay 80%. You suggested that this was somewhat of a 
Well, you know, the, I, get the 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 um, I guess the alternative is then the Hebrew Light Power, because we do need the power, is going to have to pay the entire bill. Do you disagree? Do you, is that your proposal? Uh, no. But, you know, let's, let's, put it, let's, let's put it in a less conspicuous spot. Let's take it out of the neighborhoods. You know, he, Heber Light and Power needs to have the, the, the power line, the, the 46K power line on ward rebuilt. You know, so this helps them rebuild that. And it also gets them another point of contact for their power to come in. But, but uh, this is a regional power line, and this is, you know, why can't they go around the ballast? You know, if, if we were to propose this to go right down Highway 113 and right through Midway, what would everybody say? No, we, let's not do that. It would ruin our small town. But what difference does it make whether we, we have it on Main Street or a couple miles south? It still ruins our town. Yeah, you I know? understand that. I guess nobody is proposing it right through downtown Midway. Midway's going to have a Right, and, and, mm -hmm. and then you guys have to think, how would you like it in your neighborhood? I totally agree with you. I mean, I'm a, I'm a citizen, citizen of the valley. I drive right. by those power lines on the Highway 40 and cringe every time I see them. Um, no doubt about that. Um, I don't like this power line more than, more than uh, anyone else. Um, I guess uh, my major struggle is you're saying, why don't we have it somewhere else? And, um, you know, our, I think, I'll speak for myself. As a commissioner, what I have to do is look at all the evidence in the record the evidence that's actually here before us and say, this is where it should go, not there. And I'm still struggling to see what the alternative proposal is. You say it should be somewhere else. Well, you know, where should it be? we have asked to see an alternate route for 18 months, a year to 18 months. And we've never seen it. They said, well, we've looked at all the routes, you know? so. We don't know if, where they've looked, you know, over there by Soldier Hollow. Well, you know, is that a viable route? You know, that's a possibility. I can draw, I could draw routes, you know, but, uh, you know, on the route that went on the north side of Heber, we saw three, three A, B, and C. We saw three different potential spots, but we have not seen any other potential spots to go around uh, the neighborhoods. So, and so that's all we've asked. And we've been asking that for 12 months, 18 months. And they said they've addressed our, our, the community's needs and, and, and requests. They haven't. They haven't, they haven't. Because they said they will. We've looked at everything. Well, I, can, uh, I understand your concern. Absolutely. And actually, we've asked the same questions of uh, both of these entities. And they have in the sessions with us us a variety of different routes. This is not by any means the only route we've seen. Um, I guess I just, you know, on the record before, it's like, what's the I, I can't get a say, no, that's not the best route. This is, there's something better here, and this is what we ought to pursue. And I just, I'm struggling to see the evidence of what that is. You know, maybe if you had an engineer who come to say, yeah, this is a viable route, this is what we should do, then. Well, I'll tell you what, yeah, if you continue this, We'll hire an engineer and come up with an alternate route. I understand. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you taking my concern. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, with respect, I know I didn't send a letter, um, but if, if, as the vice chairman of the uh, Planning Commission for the City of Midway, if I could just share briefly some of the additional things that we had requested. Do you know his name? Excuse me, Kevin. Um, and I think this is very germane to the discussion uh, and the CBP that's before you this evening. As, as we're all familiar, the condition use permit, when it's reviewed by a planning commission, is to look at the impacts and to come up with any type of mitigation. Using the analogy of any other condition of use permit application that comes, whether it's before the county or city here in the valley, requires very detailed and specific information. Scaled drawings that shows the impact, shows the separation, shows the setbacks, etc. What you have before you, and this is the same thing that came before us uh, at the Midway Planning Commission, was simply a Google maps 
with a lie. And I, I can't see how any planning commission can um, look at the interests of the property owners that are affected without seeing what are the impacts. So we ask them to, as, as one of the additional items of information, we ask them to, to provide a detailed plan, no different than any other applicant submitting a conditional use permit or any other type of subdivision within the city, to show the existing easement in its width, scale drawing, the proposed easement, we're being told this, that that goes from 30 feet to 60 feet, uh, to show existing property lines. I'd ask for additional information to show existing structures so we can see how close that is. Um, as well as to show better visuals because there's a different uh, standard as I understand it um, that Rocky Mountain uh, has to adhere to for the clearing of vegetation versus heater light and power. And that will have a significant impact on, on the property owners. Um, granted, this is going through the entire valley here and goes through certain neighborhoods that get more affected uh, than others. But without that information, I, I, I looked at one particular property who's clearly not the most affected. Uh, and I can show you a diagram if you'd like to see it, but uh, where the existing uh, garage is less, it's about 41 feet from the existing right away, city's right away. And they're going to do a 60-foot easement across there. And they have very large, old-growth uh, uh, trees that are going to have to be you know, curb-cut and taken down. Um, those type of impacts aren't being addressed. And <coughs> sitting on the Midway Planning Commission, I wanted to be able to look in the eye any property owner that was affected and to be able to say, yes, we looked at and we, we considered and understood the impacts upon your property. Right now, I believe the application before you, you don't have that information. And we still don't have that information. And so I, I think it behooves you, and I would, I would encourage and suggest that you continue this item uh, to ask for that additional information uh, so that you can review the impacts upon the property owners and, and provide them the necessary due diligence uh, that I think the Planning Commission should afford. Well, I just have a comment. It's, it's extremely helpful, and I wish Heber City were here as well. Uh, I, again, I've always been concerned that we need to be on the same page across the, uh, the valley. So thank you for the update and uh, comments. I find it's helpful. Thank you. So again, I I think the public comments closed. What are you doing? I want to make a comment. <laughs> it's, it's something you guys haven't addressed. I'm okay. not regurgitating it. Yeah, I've been in so many meetings there addressed. But yep. this, you got that. It's three. I understand. Okay. okay. So <laughs> here's one of the things. Um, Today. Excuse me. Excuse me. So. Uh, Richard Doxy on behalf of Nymphus Murdoch Springs. We're an adjoining property owner, kitty corner from where they're proposing the substation. Um, I, from the note, first of all, from the notice, I couldn't tell that this was they were putting the substation. I was finding out a hold of Jason last Thursday. I still want to sit down with them and go through that. I, I have significant concerns with that they're what they proposed with the substation. But let's just talk first from their, the flaw in the conditional use permit. Um, you've done a great job of covering A through C, A through J. We haven't done any, discussed any mitigation components to the substation. Everyone's focused on the lines. Okay. They're trying to put a substation according to, I think, 10, 10 feet from my property, or our, from my client's property. Okay. You just don't throw that through without discussing mitigating factors. So I, I, I implore the, the, the commission actually consider what the mitigating factors are with this substation. Okay? But let's look at this. They bought a residential property. They brought the wrong kind of property for what the substation they want. They're proposing a 10-acre substation in the conditional use permit. Here's what your code says. These standards shall be in addition 
to any standard set forth in the land use ordinance for the zoning district wherein the proposed conditional use will be established. Here's your RA5 zoning. Permissible lot coverage. The residential uh, zone, RA5, all buildings including accessory buildings and structures, which is your, which is your substation, shall not cover more than 20% of the area of the lot or partial land. They get two acres on that 20 acres they bought. Okay. They're not, they haven't requested a zone change or a, a code change. And I suspect if I came in and wanted to put a 10 acre building on one of uh, my 20 acre lot, I bet you guys would deny it. Because the code doesn't allow it. Okay. This whole, the whole zone is to preserve the agriculture nature of the, of the area. So on its face, the conditional use uh, permit fails for the substation. Now, with that being said, I still would like to sit down with the power company. I'd like to talk to them about what possible mitigating factors we can talk about. Are they going to move this into the center of the, in the, center of the lot? Okay. Are they going to keep it to two acres? Okay. Are, are, they, are they trying to do something against what our code, is, what our code requires? Okay. These are all things I need to address with them. What kind of landscaping is going to be here to cover this 30 foot high uh, substation okay, of 10 acres okay, with 110 foot poles coming out? I, I'm sorry, but, but putting up rusted poles <laughs> doesn't, is not a mitigating factor. Okay. Um, the other thing, so so it fails on the permissible lot coverage. I'm I'm wrapping up. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess at the end of the day, I want to continue. I want to talk to the power shift. I want to sit down with Jason. I want to go through these where the substation is, so we can actually have a meeting on the substation. All the only thing we've heard so far is power lines. Thank you. I just have one small comment. I'm also on the Midway you have City. One minute. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm Heather Whitney. I'm also on the Midway City Planning Commission with Kevin Payne. And I just wanted to bring up a couple other things that we discussed and we're asking of Rocky Mountain Power and Heber Light and Power. We requested an independent third party cost study to get us to show us um, uh, hope. Uh, some costs that we could feel even more comfortable with in assessing the difference between going underground and overground with the power lines. And going along with what Kevin was talking about, we wanted to know the difference in pole heights and distances if you're going with different pole heights, whether um, and depending on whether they're wood or metal, because we're still looking at whether the poles will be met, uh, wood and how much exactly taller those would be versus the metal. Um, we didn't have that kind of information so that we could make an assessment even aesthetically. The pictures that we had were limited. They showed various roads, but you really couldn't tell the impact overall of what we currently have versus what the alternatives are if we are going over ground. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, public comment is closed. Any further comment or any any uh, thoughts? <sighs> um, I, I might just ask um, the applicant to, uh, to answer a couple of questions about the substation. I think this one has been some legitimate points raised about that. How high is the substation accepting the poles? Not including the poles, how high is the substation? I heard somebody say 20 feet or 30 feet. Do we know? Excluding the poles. This should be easy. It's supposed to be a toss. <laughs> that was supposed to be a soft one. This, is, this is, well, <laughs> this is excluding the like the dead end structures, like any transmission poles or Correct. call poles inside, probably 35 feet and less. 
Um, but the, the, you know, the majority, this, this would be bus work, it would be that, that high. So it would be like wires or aluminum bus. Most of the facilities are going to be um, 15 feet or four less. And is it so accurate that it's going to be 10 acres in size? Is that you know, I, I don't know what the exact size is. It's actually 13 is what they're going to fence. Yeah. This is what it, our discussion first day. Yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're looking at probably substation footprint being uh, in that 8 to 10 acre range. Um, and know that in a substation, the more, the more land you can use uh, to widen things out, the less you have to go up high to get clearances. Um, and so, you know, for the POD substation, us and Rocky Mountain Pit Power together, we're looking at that 8 to 10 range. Um, but we were planning on fencing 13 acres, you know, um, just so that we've got adequate fencing around it. And is it true that that, that, that parcel there is 20 acres? Yeah, 20 acres. So, 50. so do you um, do you have any proposals or some suggestions that might be some different ways to mitigate the impact of that particular substation? Um, I know that you're looking at 10-foot retaining walls or dividing walls, right? Precast concrete walls. Yeah. Precast uh, concrete fence. Yeah. Can you think of anything else that uh, could be done? In, inside of the substation, you know. Right. There's a statement saying it's the wrong kind of property. I mean, it's a it's a conditional use on this type of property for these types of facilities. It certainly contemplates that you're not going to have gigantic open space. And if you look at the say, how much space does your control building take up? You know, our control building is much smaller. You know, you have other facilities throughout the site. Or that is that part of an accessory building? Is that part of the structure? Right? Yeah, that's where you split hair from an argument. I hear, I hear you. I think what we all understand is that you're applying for a conditional use for the substation on that particular property. Maybe an allowed use, but still a conditional use. And I don't think I would be quite the same with the substation on that. It, in that zone. If that's what they intended, they would have said <coughs> without a conditional use permit. I agree, there. but I think the, the point that I forgot his name, the gentleman before you raised, was the if that's a part of the permit, then perhaps that should be examined on the same factors of the code. And that's why I'm asking those questions to see what they're going to do. That makes sense? I'm not sure how to be different. Yeah, so uh, one of the things on substations, the typical uh, standard that we would apply from an AFC perspective would be a seven foot tall fence that's chain link, non scalable, that has. Uh, barbed wire that you know, camps outward. What's been proposed is a 10 foot tall precast concrete wall. Also meets NESC requirements, which we are held to regardless of what. You know, we're, we're limited on what we can do from the outside by NESC. We have to maintain safety. Um, yeah, that's that's one thing that's been incorporated in this application. I, I, at the end of the day, it's a substation. What about? Um landscaping or shrubbery or something that might conceal, uh, I don't know if you can have trees in proximity to the substation. Or yeah, and, and Mr. Payne talked about clear cut. We, we, we actually never used the phrase clear cut on, on uh, you know, our veg management policy that's been thrown out. We won't be clear cutting on existing transmission lines. Uh, you have to maintain NESC clearance. Keeper Lightning Power and Rocky Mountain Power both have to maintain an ESC clearance, which does require some vegetation management. And where there's an existing line, that line already has to be maintained. Uh, as far as vegetation, yes, vegetation can be around a substation. Um, we have to be selective, just like any property owner, to be selective about what kind of trees uh, or shrubs, et cetera, that they would plant directly underneath the line. Uh, but, but yes, there are some species that are, are permissible. Not within the substation, to be clear. Right. Right. The, the, the exterior that yeah. might conceal the 10 foot wall and make it uh, blend into the surroundings as much as possible, obviously. It's a substation. 
it's not going to blend into the agricultural land or the native zone, but uh, I'm just trying to look for ways to potentially mitigate the impact of it. So, um, one final question I have, and I'm sorry, but uh, we heard from uh, Councilman Payne, and I forgot your name, ma'am. Whitney. 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 Well, Heather Whitney. Um, about some of the information they had requested in Midway, it seems to me that those are pretty exacting drawings and uh, engineer drawings and some other things. So what's even possible to create at this point before you know the routing? And how are you going to comply with that? Well, yeah, that, be, that becomes the cart and the horse side of this. And in addition, do you want longer spans or shorter spans? Because the calculated easement width will change I, I think there are some specifics in Midway that, that in some cases apply and in some cases don't apply to the same things that you have here and, and that's an existing line. Um, I, I really don't want to focus on a different permitting process. That's really not part of this specific review. Um, you, you're, you're right. You, know, you can go and get property lines. You can go and, and pin down. Uh, where we propose these poles to be, but if you want longer spans, then that easement width is going to be affected by that. You could have more blowout or less if you want shorter spans, for example. Um, I, I disagree uh, that you cannot make a determination on what the impacts, the proximate properties are going to be if there's a transmission line. I mean, if it's two feet on one side of the property line or the other, short of obtaining easements, which is really not part of the Planning Commission's scope, Short of obtaining easements, the impact of the property is, and I would argue, the same. Doesn't this application have a roof, though? You, you, you're asking for a roof. Yes, we have we have applied for a specific roof. Okay. We're asking for approval on that specific roof. Right. Okay. We are not necessarily saying this is exactly what the span has to be. You could say we want shorter spans for shorter poles. Right. We want I, longer spans for, okay. for longer poles. Understood. I think that's something we should decide tonight. Sorry. Reminder about the microphone. I, I agree with you. I think if nothing, if we accomplish nothing else tonight, we should give you guidance on poles and spans because I think it materially impacts things that I would like personally more information on. So I, I think it, we should figure that out tonight. That's my view. And I, I'm not sure, Mr. Chairman, what the vehicle for doing that is, whether it's a vote on that particular item. Um, Any questions for that slide? No. Okay. 